Hi, thanks for being here. I appreciate your time. It seems that most of us have to deal with a long distance relationship at some time in our lives. What's the best way to keep a relationship going strong when you're far away from the one you love? There are times in our lives when we must be separated from the person we love most. My daughter is currently living several states away from her boyfriend. She was living with him for the last year, but he had to finish his last semester of college in another state. When she was a teenager, she had a long distance relationship for more than a year with a guy in another country. She and I visited him and his mother just once during their entire relationship. Most of their time spent together was online and involved huge time zone differences. Over the past several years, my husband has traveled frequently, sometimes almost every week, only coming home on the weekends. I have a young friend whose husband is in the Coast Guard and she's often left home alone with her dogs when he's working at sea for weeks at a time. There are many reasons couples must be apart and most of us will have to deal with it sometime in our relationships. Technology such as social media and Skype has made getting through these stretches of time much easier. If you're deciding whether you want to start or continue a relationship at a distance, or if you should end it instead, you'll need to think about these two factors. One, do you know you truly love them? If you can't significantly invest in and commit to the relationship, it won't grow into love. Number two, is staying together as a couple what is best or what is wanted? Remember that what you want can change over time, but if remaining a couple brings you closer to your life goals, then that is what is best for you. Being far away from one another puts stress on the relationship because it requires an extraordinary amount of trust and dedication. It can be so frustrating to keep the connection you once had when the two of you were together all the time. The extra distance makes things complicated, and you could get sad and lonely at times. However, time apart also makes the simplest things the sweetest, like being able to hold the other person's hand, eating together at the same table, feeling each other's touch, taking a walk together, or smelling each other's special fragrance. The things we take for granted when we're together all the time become as precious as gold when our time together is very limited. To keep your love alive and strong, here are 10 tips to make your long distance relationship work. Number one, have an end goal. Make a plan with each other and create a timeline, marking down the estimated times apart and times together, and decide when you will get back to being together full time. If both of you are working in the same direction towards a future that includes one another, it will make the waiting more bearable. I have this tip listed first because both my daughter and her boyfriend agree it is the most important thing they can hold on to when they miss each other. Knowing when the separation will end relieves a lot of anxiety for them. Number two, try to communicate regularly and creatively. Message each other good morning and good night every day. Update your partner on your life and its happenings, however small. Send each other pictures, audio clips, and short videos from time to time. By putting in this kind of effort, you make the other person feel loved. Number three, do things together. Play an online game together. Watch the same movie at the same time, then discuss it afterwards. Go to an outdoor event or visit with family while you're video calling each other. Order food delivered to your partner and eat dinner at the same time. Number four, visit each other. Visits are the highlight of every long distance relationship. After all the waiting and yearning and abstinence, you finally get together to enjoy kissing, holding hands, and snuggling, which are all common to other couples, but so very special and extra intimate for people rarely together in person. Number five, stay honest and open with each other. Talk about your feelings of fear, insecurity, jealousy, apathy, or disconnection. If you try to hide anything from your partner, that secret will eat away at you. Don't try to deal with things all by yourself. Let your partner help you and give you the support you need. 
Do each other the favor of discussing important feelings like these by phone or video call. It is too easy to misunderstand the tone of a conversation when using only text messages or email. Number six, enjoy your alone time and your time with your friends and family. Go to the gym more often. Get a new hobby. Watch films or television shows your partner doesn't like. Use this time as an opportunity to get to know and appreciate yourself and the things you like. This is what I focused on when my husband was traveling and what I've recommended to my friend whose husband is in the Coast Guard. However, becoming more independent can make it difficult to adjust when the separation is over because each of us continues to change and grow on our own. I developed routines with a whole new group of friends that my husband had never met. He got used to sleeping sprawled out in a king-size bed and having daily maid service. Once he was no longer traveling, it took many months to develop routines and habits as a couple again. Number seven, know each other's schedules. It's helpful to know when the other person is busy or not so that you can text or call at the right time. This is especially essential when the both of you are living in different time zones. I encourage my family to use and share their Google Calendar with me. That makes it easy to know when they'll be at work, school, or at the gym. Then I don't worry if they can't return a text right away. Number eight, social media, email, and mail. Social media helps everyone stay connected. But regular mail has become even more special because of the effort it takes to get stamps and envelopes or make a trip to the post office. Mail each other postcards, love letters, or small gifts. Deliveries of flowers or packages can really brighten your mood when you're missing your sweetheart. Number nine, gift a personal object for the other person to hold on to. There's power in a memento. We often attach meanings to the little things and items found in our everyday life. We like to store memories and physical things in the hope that when our mind fails us, we could look or hold on to something that will help us remember. My daughter and her boyfriend got matching distance bracelets and promise rings. His bracelet is all black beads with one white bead, and hers is all white beads with one black bead. It helps them feel connected. He left a few of his things behind while he's off at school, and occasionally I'll see her shuffling around the house wearing his slippers. It helps her to remember that this time apart is limited and their love is real and lasting. Number 10, stay positive. You need to promote positive energy in your relationship. Waiting can be painful and lonely, but you need to be thankful that you have someone to love who also loves you back. Be thankful for the little things like the cute new emoticon stickers you found and for each other's health and safety. Take a moment now and think about somebody you love who's far away from you. Whether that's your girlfriend or wife, a friend or a family member, think of something you can do to connect with that person in a way that will make you both smile. Keeping a relationship alive across the miles takes thought and effort. The longer you wait to reach out, the more difficult it will be to reconnect. Once you've thought of that person and how you want to connect, take action and write to her or give her a call. Tell her you were thinking about her and how much she means to you. Practice kindness through communication and spread a little happiness around the world. While you're reaching out, write to me in the comments below and tell me what you want to learn more about in upcoming videos. I'd love to hear from you. If you'd like to send me a little sunshine to brighten my day, please visit my Patreon page and consider pledging a small amount each month to join our community, receive bonus perks, and support my work. And please take a moment now and subscribe. I'll be uploading a new video every Thursday, as well as occasional bonus videos. Thanks for meeting with me. We'll talk again soon. Joe, can we freshen this up? The softer side.